Hey Привет, Church! Всем привет! Добро Welcome to online service of Hillsum Church Moscow. If you're watching us for the first time, we're happy to have you. And no matter what format we gather, we're all online at home. We believe that God is going to work today in your life. Your faith will be stronger, your spirit will be stronger, and I believe that this service will be great encouragement for you. And I also believe that God will answer prayers and needs in your life during the service. And right now we're going to pray together about the needs and prayers you see on our screens. These prayers were submitted by people during the week, and I encourage you to go through the season together, connect to each other, pray with each other. And let's pray together right now. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you, that you are a Heavenly Father and you know all our needs, and all our challenges and prayers, Lord. Lord, we pray about people who are in need right now, who are sick right now, about healing of these people. We pray about peace and hearts. We know that you are above this situation. You hold everything in control. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Also, you can join church prayer, daily prayer. We pray at 12 p.m. You can set your alarm and just pray a couple of minutes every day. And also, I want to say thank you to all, all the church that in these hard times we attend church and many people keep giving, having, supporting what church can do right now during this time, helping and answering uh, people's needs, physical needs and spiritual needs. And I like that Apostle Paul writes in Philippians 4 verse 10, I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned but you had no opportunity to show it. Maybe like in church in Philip, right now we're in situations that are stopping us from doing good or giving, but I want to say thank you to you that you keep supporting church and through what church does, uh, taking care of people. And I like what Paul says next, verse 17, not that I desire your gifts, but I desire is that more be credited to your account. He says about when we take care of people who are in need, even when we are in need, God does something in our lives supernaturally because He always honors and blesses this because his, this is His principle. Apostle Paul continues in verse 19, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. I believe that God will help us to go through the season and be a blessing to other people as a church and individual. We're going to keep praying for you. Let's stay in faith, stay church in a time like this. And we're going to worship right now together and make this time of worship in our homes, sing with the team. You'll see this words on the screen. We'll be back here shortly. Я 
тебя И сегодня пусть знает как Я призову тебя Иисус И сегодня и никогда Всего лишь жить не вечно править мне. Финал уже решен. Победа в твоих руках. И сегодня пусть знает враг. И сегодня пусть знает враг. Нет, нет. И сегодня и никогда. И сегодня пусть знает враг, пусть знает враг, пусть знает враг Я буду петь, и тьма отступит Я буду петь, и страх уйдет Буду душой к тебе стремиться Я призову тебя И сегодня пусть знает враг И сегодня пусть знает враг Нет, нет, и сегодня и никогда Иисус, не сегодня пусть знает враг И сегодня пусть знает враг И сегодня пусть знает Ожидаю мгновения, Бога прикосновения, Шум вокруг пути ко мне говори, Пред тобой замираю, И всем сердцем не мою, Словам я твои больше знать хочу. Больше знаю я тебе, я все отдам. Так хочу пребывать в твоей любви, быть таким, как хочешь ты. Слаще всего Больше знать хочу Иисус тебя Есть больше Знаю я тебе Я все отдам Так хочу Пребывать в твоей любви Быть таким, как хочешь ты так желаю я тебя познать, мой Бог. Я открою сердце вновь и развеет страх любовь. Я не без прикосновения жажду. Свое 
Открою сердце я для тебя. Ведь можешь только ты, Бог, изменить меня навсегда. To our home, our kitchen, if you're watching online service of Hillsong Church Moscow for the first time, we're ha happy to have you. We're a Christian church, we're a regular folk that believe in God, that love God, love people, and try to live by faith, applying God's word in their life. We're going to read the Bible today. We believe that the Bible is the Holy Scripture, and God speaks through this book to our daily lives. And we want today that God would speak to all of us, especially during this crisis season we're going through. Let's open our hearts, open our minds, and ask God to speak to us, all of us, through His Word. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love, for your mercy, for this new day. Lord, speak to us today and let your word build our faith, our spirit and life. Let it be alive and active and bring real answers to our daily needs and help every one of us to do our next steps with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. I hope you are well. We are going to read the Bible today and we believe that this is not just a historical book or literature. No, this is God's Word and we need to ask questions and find answers to this question. God, what do you want to tell me today? What do you want to tell me this day? Maybe correct me in something, or lead me to somewhere, saving word in this situation. I believe God can tell you this today. And today, on Palm Sunday, maybe you heard about it, this is the Sunday before Easter. And we're going to read the story about what happened during this time in Jerusalem, how Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey, 
И мы знаем, we know, потому что эта история описана в четырех Евангелиях. Они uh, просто их, клали, uh, некоторые клали свою верхнюю перед ним, потому что все before him or the robes before him, because they're welcoming him as a king, because the day before, on Saturday, Jesus resurrected Lazarus. Lazarus also was there, and all the people saw him, and they were uh, calling their friends to see the one who resurrected Lazarus. Some historians say that on that celebration, a lot of people came from different parts of the world, not only from Jerusalem. Some historians say that they calculated the amount of sacrifices that were Made back then. During that time, when Jesus entered the donkey, there were two and a half million people that came into this small town in comparison with Moscow right now. People were celebrating, they were worshiping him. And I believe if и вообще Today внимательными, то за теми листьями и ветками, которые люди постилали перед Иисусом, Jesus, можно увидеть какие-то истины, которые Бог хочет нам us. сказать. И на самом деле в этой and всей истории story, Иисус Jesus говорит важные слова, words, важные фразы, которые, я верю, могут uh, построить наш дух, построить нашу веру. И нам нужно быть внимательными, чтобы увидеть. Потому что, когда мы подходим к дереву или видим дерево сдалека, мы видим дерево всегда по листьям. Но когда мы подходим ближе, мы можем увидеть плоды. Если мы жаждем и мы хотим сорвать плод, нам нужно обращать внимание не на листья, но искать плод, искать суть. И иногда люди так смотрят на христианство. This is similar how people see Christianity, faith, or church. They just see some outwardly things, leaves, projects that the church creates. But the essence is important. Maybe people look at Jesus from the outside, but we need to pay attention not on the leaves, but to see the root. Amen. Не будь слишком увлечен листьями. Смотри в корень, даже когда мы будем читать сегодняшнюю историю об этом невербном воскресении. И нам нужно We need to try to move our eyes from some things that can distract us. A lot of events happen back then. But this day is important when we read the story from the Bible about what happened. Keep our eyes on Jesus. That is why I call today's message Keep your eyes on Jesus. Потому что было много вещей, которые могли бы отвлечь наше внимание. Us, let's Но давайте продолжать смотреть him. на него. Jesus Иисус говорит очень важные фразы, очень важные вещи о воскресенье, говоря на самом деле, что будет происходить на следующей неделе. А на следующей неделе была воскресная пятница, в первом воскресенье, когда Христос воскрес. И Он как бы в этот день перед всеми учениками и всем народом проповедует о самом себе, потому что Он же будет главным героем предстоящих событий на следующей неделе. И давайте откроем свои сердца, давайте читать внимательно эту историю. Мы будем читать из Евангелия от Иоанна. Chapter 12, starting verse 12 to verse 32. And this is quite a big piece of scripture. We're going to stop and think about the words of Jesus or other people or prophets that are written here. So let's begin to read together the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 12. The next day, the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, Praise God, blessing on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's colt. На самом деле, я хотел бы здесь остановиться и сказать, я верю, здесь очень важные слова записаны здесь, потому что мы можем смотреть на то, что Иисус въезжал на ослике, но почему Он въезжал в Иерусалим на ослике? С такими словами, не бойся, Божий народ, потому что твой царь 
Your king is coming, riding on a donkey. На востоке осел — это благородное животное. В нашей стране тебя еще могут опасать. В те времена цари uh, по обычаю ездили на войну и приезжали на войну на коне. Но war. когда они побеждали в битве, victory, они всегда садились на осла и возвращались домой в свой город или в столицу на осле, знаменуя мир. Это было животное, которое, которое провозглашало мир. И в Ветхом Завете, в Библии, мы читаем множество историй, когда знатные люди ездили на ослах. Поэтому Jesus, uh, Иисус, Andrew, uh, въезжая на ослике, Он как бы без слов donkey, показывает всему народу, который понимал это, что Он несет мир. Он идет сражаться не с тобой, Он идет сражаться не с людьми, Он идет сражаться за нас, со смертью и со грехом, и попрать дьявола, но... Но Он идет, чтобы принести нам мир. И все люди должны были это понять. И это, мы, это то, что мы понимаем. Исайя 9 глава 6 стих, это другой пророк, говорит, и нарекут Ему имя чудный, советник, Бог крепкий, Отец вечности, князь мира. Все эти слова говорят об Иисусе. Нарекут Ему имя. Имя в те времена обозначало name, сущность uh, человека, его характер, кем он является. Еще раз здесь говорится And чудный. Says, как много чудес Иисус сделал. Евангелист uh, Иоанн John он says, говорит, что если бы перечесть все чудеса, которые сделал Иисус, то всех мира не хватило бы, чтобы описать их. Did, Это not, просто в эти no несколько лет его служения здесь на земле. Counselor, Советник, вся мудрость обитала в Иисусе в Христе, и мы видим это в том, как Он отвечал фарисеям или другим people. людям. Не было no ни одного вопроса, на который answer. Он мог бы, не мог бы ответить. У Него всегда была мудрость, поэтому в данном нужна мудрость, нам нужен Иисус. Бог, God, God, even даже смерть, грех не могли победить его на кресте. Him, Он победил смерть, death. это пасхальное послание. Отец вечности, Father, Он был до начала всего творения. Он был в начале, и Он будет end. в конце. Он he является Lord, Господом, и также князь мира. Он пришел, чтобы принести мир. Don't be afraid, не бойся, God's people. Божий народ. Первые слова, которые Иисус words, сказал после того, как Он воскрес, said, когда Он зашел, вернее, Он появился в том помещении, где были собраны они боялись иудеев, они закрыли Jews, все двери, окна, они просто находились вместе. That, и до этого women, некоторые женщины, которые уже видели воскресшего Христа, Christ сказали им, Uh, reason, он воскрес, но они не поверили Ему. Но когда Христос явился them, между ними, первое, что Он сказал, не бойтесь, я пришел принести мир, я несу мир вам, я сражаюсь, мир. Я несу мир вам. Я сражаюсь за вас. Don't не бойся тот кризис, в котором ты оказался, потому что Бог сражается за тебя Amen? сегодня. Аминь. Если sick, ты болеешь, Бог сражается за тебя. If Если у like тебя в чем-то недостаток, послушай, Бог сражается за тебя. Тебе важно увидеть эту истину в этих словах, слова, которые мы читаем. В то время в Иерусалим приходили разные люди. Даже из Греции, здесь написано, мы будем читать дальше. Люди из разных народов, Иисус шел на острове, знаменуя, что Он несет мир для всех людей. Вы знаете, какую важную истину нам нужно здесь также увидеть? Чтобы позволить Богу сражаться за тебя, тебе нужно быть наполненным миром, а не тревогой. Потому что часто, когда мы наполнены каким-то стрессом, тревогой, когда мы переживаем страхом по поводу будущего или каких-то ситуаций, moment, в этот момент мы не позволяем Богу сражаться за нас. Так часто, когда я был so наполнен или под каким-то давлением, stressed, в моей жизни был стресс, или какая-то тревога внутри, или когда все было не в порядке right внутри, inside of me. Почему я не позволял Богу сражаться за меня или сделать что-то в этой ситуации? Потому что под давлением мы часто pressure, можем просто сделать какую-то глупость. Or или просто закрыться в себе, или убежать от ситуации. И, наверное, все эти вещи я делал в жизни. Но в тот момент, когда я все доверял Богу, когда я просто наполнял свое сердце миром и Богу, и просто говорил, Бог, я не могу сделать ничего в этой ситуации, но ты можешь. Поэтому, когда мир наполняет наши сердца, 
That's when God is fighting for us and we let him to do that, his part, his job. And this is what Jesus it's uh, written about Jesus. Don't be afraid, God's people. Don't be afraid, church. Don't be afraid, everyone who trusts Jesus, their lives. He is fighting for us right now, today. Where you are, God is for you. Amen. Let's read on. Gospel of John. We're going to read 12 chapters, starting from verse 16. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. The prophet Zacharias wrote previous verses. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Maybe because they had heard that he had performed this sign when out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to the one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world is gone after him. Let's talk here for a moment. And through the irony and the frustration of Pharisees, we also can see the important truth when they say, this is getting us nowhere, the whole world has gone after him. The whole world is, has gone after him, after Jesus. You can rephrase this, Jesus is the hope for the world, Jesus is the hope of humanity. All the answers is in him. All the questions we can bring to him, the whole world has gone after him. him. If you're sick, he is your healing. If you're in need, he is your provider. If you suffer inside or something is wrong, he gives you peace. He is your answer. That is why I say, even in the story, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Don't look at the leaves and branches. Don't think if it were palm trees or if Jesus entered Moscow, this would be willow branches. But back then, um, in the East, they had palms. That is why it's palm Sunday. But it does not matter what kind of tree it was. It's important who was entering Jerusalem. It was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when this celebration happens, a lot of people and events, we can lose the focus. But more important, let's keep our focus on Jesus. Even Pharisees were standing behind and saying, this is getting us nowhere. The world has gone after him. We cannot do anything. The world is following Jesus. Amen? Even today. So let's, let's read on verse 20. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. With the request, sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Jesus often answered like that. He was asked one question, but he was answering with important things. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Why I'm stopping here? Because we need to understand that these Greeks that came up to him, or the disciples of Jesus, or the people who heard these phrases, they were thinking about different things. They were thinking about the glory of men, earthly glory. When people were sh shouting to Jesus, but in reality, Jesus was speaking about completely different things. He was speaking about next Friday and Sunday when he will be resurrected. When he will go to the cross, he will die on the cross for our sins. And through this, God will be glorified. Jesus was speaking about completely different things that disciples could think about back then. And the important truth that we can see here God will be glorified through your weaknesses, not through your strength. Think about this. God is glorified through our weakness, not through our strength. Sometimes we think that we can glorify God with our deeds, or our talents and gifts. And yes, we can do this for God, glorifying Him with our lives, but 
Но на самом деле God is Бог прославляется через наши слабости. Когда мы немощны в чем-то или мы ограничены чем-то, Бог прославляется тем, что Он становится нашим обеспечителем, нашим health, здоровьем, healer. нашим исцелителем. Поэтому Бог прославился через то, что Иисус did on the cross because he was resurrected from, from the dead and this brought the biggest glory to God. God is and will be glorified through your life right now. Maybe during this season we're all limited in movement. Maybe someone lost their job and limited in finances. Maybe some things you could do before for God and you think you're limited right now, but listen, но послушай, Бог может прославиться через твои слабости, а не через силу. Аминь. Давайте читать дальше вместе. 24 стих. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this. Hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. And I want to stop here. And after this, we're going to read on. Jesus speaks about three important examples. Three examples about one truth. He's speaking about wheat kernel that needs to fall to the ground to bring fruit. And if it does not die, it won't produce many seeds. And he also speaks about our soul that can attach to some earthly things. But if it attaches to earthly things, we depreciate the eternity and what God prepared for us in eternity. That is why we do not need to attach to earthly things, but to attach and value the eternal things that God gives us in Christ. And also, He speaks about ministry here. If you want to be with me, imitate my way of living, serve others. God will honor the one who serves me. How do you serve Jesus today? It's when you serve people in need. Somebody needs food, we can bless this person. Somebody is in need, we can serve this person. And also, he says, Father, save me from this hour. But I came for this hour, for this time, like this, I was born for. For this week, I was born for. 33 years ago, Jesus says, this week will change everything. Palm Sunday and next week is the most important week in the life of Jesus. And he understands that he is going to go through. He brought peace to people, he will go forward fight for people, he will die for people on the cross, and he knows what it's going to cost him. And he says, Father, save me from this, but I know that I came for this time. And maybe there's something in life that upsets you, or things that in the world are frustrated, but maybe for this kind of time, we're here as a church. Hillsong Church, maybe during this time we can shine even brighter for God, maybe through this, in the circumstances, God can be glorified like never before in our generation. Let's proclaim this and believe that for this time we are here right now in Moscow. Amen. And Jesus says about these three examples and speaks about the important truth about the cross. He speaks about the cross, about what is going to happen on Friday. Because cross is when you die for yourself literally to live for something new. That will cross men in life of Jesus and every believer's life. It is only through Christ that cross and because of cross we restore our relationship with God. We die for old life to live for something bigger, to live new life that God gives us. Amen? Also, cross It's when you stop being attached to people, to, to things that you may have today and not have tomorrow. And you value eternal life and what God gave you 
вместе this life с ним на небесах и также крест ministry to other people и God honors this I believe this was relevant in Jesus' life and this is also relevant for us today that is why when in this crisis die for some things that we had in our life before and if we do this for God I believe God will bless this and if we were attached to some things that we had in our life, even our job, some people love their job, they love it, maybe you lost this job, but tell you that you have God in your life, thank Him for everything He does and that He is in your life. And also, if you are in need, serve other people, because this is what God will honor. And maybe this will be the, the answer for your situation, for your need, when you open your life to serve others. I'm going to read the next verse 28. This is the last verse we're going to read today. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thunder. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment of this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out, and I will be lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. What an important words Jesus speaks here. And you know, people say that people do not judge people. But you need to understand that Jesus speaks here about the judgment. And yes, God is not judging you. Jesus came not to judge all the people, but Jesus came to judge the one uh, sin, death, and banish devil from our lives. That is why Jesus came. Yes, God didn't judge you, but the one who judges you. Amen? And it's important to see these things for us. He says, now is the time for judgment on this world. Things in the world that destroys our lives, sin, death, devil, the things that destroy our lives. He came to fight with these things. Don't be afraid. We read in the beginning, because God is fighting for you. Us as Christians, as church, be filled with peace and encourage other people. God fights for us when we trust Him. When we say, God, not with my strength, but with your power, will happen this and that. I believe, God, you restore everything. You protect me. I believe that you heal me with your strength in the name of Jesus Christ. God did not judge you, but the one who is judging you. And I believe this is an important message that we can see in the words of Jesus Christ. I believe that this is what Palm Sunday is about. And Jesus, when he was entering Jerusalem on a donkey, he was telling all of the people what his next week is going to bring, what he's going to do. He's going to deal with the pandemic of sin that has filled the whole world and that was transmitted from person to person, beginning from Adam and Eve. And Jesus came to deal with this problem. And what do you think? Will Jesus deal with these problems and challenges that we're facing today? I think you know the answer. So let's pray together. Let's be filling our hearts with peace from God, assuredness in Him. There's everything that is in the world, we cannot be sure in this for 100%. But we can be sure in God. Amen. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for your peace and goodness that you give us. I pray, please feel every person today that is watching this video today. Lord, fill our houses, homes with your peace and assurance in you. You are our protector, you're fighting for us. 
And you say to us, don't be afraid. You said it through different prophets in the Old Testament. If you are confused by something, don't be afraid. Trust God. God is fighting for you. He's going to have a great victory for you, to lift you up, to glorify you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I wanted also to pray one prayer right now with people who maybe need to reconcile with God. When I say reconcile, why am I saying this? Because the Bible says when we leave our own lives in this world, they are ruled by sin. We live in conflict with God because of the sin we have in our life. But we read today that Jesus came to reconcile people with God because sin is destroying our relationship with the Lord and other people. And how can we restore this relationship with God? How sin can leave our life, you know? Because of Jesus came to the cross to die for our sin for sin to be punished on the cross and death would never rule the world and you can restore your relationship with the Lord. And if you wanted to receive this forgiveness from God, receive salvation into your life, let's pray simple prayer right now with me. Repeat the simple words. This is a simple prayer, but make it your own. Just repeat that for me and pray with faith. God is closer than you think. He hears you, he is right now here. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you and I admit that I am a sinner and I need a Savior. I believe that Jesus Christ, God's Son, came into this world to go to the cross and die for my sin and to be resurrected on the third day to give me a new life and salvation. I receive the gift of righteousness, I receive the gift of eternal life, I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and I believe that from now on I am God's child, I am justified, and I am a new creation. We pray it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so to God say Amen. Congratulations from me and Hillsong Church. And this is a great decision to pray a prayer to invite Jesus as God and Savior into your life. I want to celebrate it with you. And if you leave your contact information on our website, we'll be happy to contact you, drop you a note. And also, we'll be happy to give you a small gift from our church Bible. We'll send it over the post or some other ways to give it to you. We are very happy for you and we want to help you make new next steps in this journey with God. The best for you is yet to come. Amen. And to say the whole church will love you, miss you, be blessed. Stay in touch. Have a great Sunday, everyone.